Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. The blockchain revolution is in full effect, and the time is right for a platform to combine high speed and low cost to create a ready-to-use platform for crypto projects. And to help us to see what's coming next in the evolution of the blockchain today, I'll be speaking with Mr. Gleb Nikitin, the co-founder and CEO of MetaHash, available online at metahash.org. Uh, Mr. Nikitin, welcome to Looking at the Markets, sir. Uh, thank you, David. Yeah, it's an honor to have you here. And I wanted to get a, just a quick education on uh, apps uh, and the blockchain. For example, uh, decentralized versus centralized. Uh, what is the difference in terms of speed between uh, decentralized and centralized? Uh, it's, actually, it's actually huge. Uh, and you know, like there are very many nuances about that. And the thing is uh, that, like, uh, if you uh, take like a common network uh, and like put it uh, into uh, one data center, yeah, and like make it work, it would be like much faster than a decentralized network because uh, the main problem in networks uh, is the connection between different continents and the synchronization of all the machines that are um, around the globe with different hardware, etc., etc., etc. So. Um, a lot of um, a lot of times I hear uh, some records uh, being done, but uh, that is all uh, all in centralized networks that are run in some test environment, and that's completely different when your network is already decentralized, and people like try to port it to IRM processors, etc. Like try to launch it on Raspberries, uh, put it on bad internet that turns up and down, and you have to handle all the conflicts of uh, that appear during this uh, during the synchronization of the network, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when you, you are dealing with a truly decentralized networks where you have the nodes all around the globe operated by different people that are running different versions of the software, sometimes it's done to date, and so on. Uh, like it drastically, uh, you know, it drastically lowers down the speed. Also, like if you uh, put very high requirements on hardware, uh, you also uh, put the speed up. But if you don't require that much of hardware, that much of bandwidth for internet channel and make it uh, like truly decentralized for common people with common hardware, uh, that's where it's very hard to achieve high speed that is suitable to make micro payments, that is uh, suitable to make fast uh, transactions for DEX, that is suitable like for everything. And why bandwidth is important, uh, bandwidth, um, there are two things that, is, that are important in networks. Uh, number one uh, is how fast the transaction actually is fully confirmed when you get the final confirmation. So in MetaHash, like 95% uh, of the times, we get under three seconds uh, final confirmation. So when we get the votes from different nodes and they all say yes and everything is synchronized so you can be confident the, transac the transaction is through. And uh, if uh, the transaction goes over five seconds, it's already a much different experience for the user. You, know, you can't gain like mass adoption when the transactions are really slow because uh, the user like gets confused by that. That's one thing. And why bandwidth is important, so how many transactions per second a blockchain can actually put through the throughput of blockchain, that's because um, when we have a large amount of transactions and get flows through the blockchain, and uh, when uh, the history of the blockchain is uh, like cost effectively stored, and not in each node when you have a system around that, that means uh, that the price of the consensus, so how much the network pays uh, to uh, people that support the nodes, that support the staking or support um, proof of work, whatever, uh, that goes drastically down as uh, the cost of each single expression gets low, but still there is enough money uh, to fund the consensus. Um, so that's what it's all about. Right. So it sounds to me like the MetaHash platform increases both the speed and the reliability of the traditional blockchain. Would that be accurate? 
Uh, yes, that would be accurate. Um, so uh, we uh, have practically uh, taken the standard model of how blockchain functions. So we uh, still do have standard blocks. We have block confirmations. We have chains. So like uh, technically and like from the cryptographical side of view, uh, we are pretty much standard blockchain. Nothing new, nothing innovative about that. But what we did, we optimized the, the network synchronization and we introduced like uh, such thing like microservices. So we don't have one role in the network. We have like multiple roles and each of the, each of the, uh, of the roles serve its own needs. Uh, so everything, you know, everything combined can work smoothly together. So all the clients can go to peer nodes and uh, like see the transactions in, into the network. Why is this important? Because when you connect uh, to peer nodes, uh, they take away the load of the connection to slow user, uh, user agents from the network. And by that way, these peer nodes accumulate all the transactions and can effectively push them through to uh, verifiers in different parts of the world and verifiers can then already check transactions, uh, take away the garbage or spam transactions and put to the cores only the ones uh, that uh, are already valid. Uh, so we get the load of the network uh, uh, much lower at the part where the hardest synchronization uh, takes part and that between the cores or as in other networks uh, called master nodes. And then that is pushed to torrent nodes that seed all the information back to the, uh, back to the end users. And we have a lot of end users. So right now, uh, we sometimes get to 8,000 uh, user wallets online, and that's a lot. If all of, the, if all of that load would go to core nodes, uh, we would uh, have to have much higher hardware requirements for them, and that's not good. Now, I believe that the market for the MetaHash coin, or MHC coin, is going to be huge in 2021. Can you please tell me about the MetaHash coin? Oh, well, the MetaHash coin is the utility in MetaHash network. Uh, it is used uh, right now to um, um, pay for transactions in the future when we introduce tokens and all, all of that uh, together. Uh, then it is paid uh, to host applications. It is paid to store data in the network that enables a lot of uh, decentralized applications to work. And uh, it is already used uh, to like uh, to buy internal domains on uh, a part of the project that's called hashspace.org. And uh, that um, is also just hashtag.org, but it's called hashspace by, by our partner, Robert. and. Uh, there, uh, there is a lot of things that are coming that MetaHash coin would be also used for. So practically, it's a utility token inside MetaHash network uh, that is uh, like uh, commonly used in the network. Also, a very important thing is uh, that we have an unusual uh, staking system that we call forging. Uh, well, like uh, this spreads uh, rewards, uh, not by block, but like to the whole network and all the network participants including user wallets. So like we have a huge array, like thousands of clients where the rewards go and so distributed in the network and the bandwidth of the network allowed us to create such such system that a lot of people got very interested in. Right. Now, how does MetaHash support decentralized apps and meta apps? Um, so, uh, due to uh, pretty much high bandwidth, not in terms of just transactions, but also in data transactions, a number of like very unusual applications can exist. So, for example, we have already uh, created a decentralized messenger. So, you can just, through our browser Metagate, you can, uh, you can access it and uh, you can enable the direct communications and exchange uh, private keys uh, with another person using blockchain and actually nobody knows who, to, who is talking with who, but you still have an absolutely encrypted connection through the chain. Also, like Hydra's good is, uh, would be very good for decentralized exchange that we are planning to build. We are planning to build a prototype and fully open source it so everybody sees how it works and how it functions. And I know some other people are also in things and who have plans to open decentralized exchanges based on MetaHash protocol. 
Okay, got it. So I just got word of a huge announcement at MetaHash. The full completion of MetaHash's decentralization and further plans to release a suite of important tools. Can you tell me about this exciting development? Um, yeah, of course. So uh, right now, like for the last three, for the last uh, like three or four even years, because the MetaHash project started like about one year before its like official announcement. Uh, like we have been concentrating all of our efforts on building the network and decentralizing it. So um, during the first years, we have already built the network, and uh, our main net is online for already three years. But uh, uh, to go the path like from a centralized network to a fully decentralized network um, has taken three years and a lot of tests on the live network, and we are still. Uh, having some issues with uh, synchronization and uh, making updates, but like we think that like within two months frame, uh, we'll get the final updates that make the network very stable and rise up. So right now, like 95% of the time we have, 95% of the time we get the speed of a transaction under three seconds. But sometimes we, uh, synchronization problem appear and uh, network self healing and uh, error correction mechanism come in play and then we can have a delay uh, of the transaction to five minutes or 10 minutes or sometimes even 15 minutes and we are working now to get this times lower so the maximum delay of a transaction in terms of a, some huge problem some huge problem is for example i know uh, the whole asia is not available yeah or uh, european servers got locked down from uh, you know, asian and u.s servers and the network has a conflict so uh, right now like we are making the final update to make it stable and lower down uh synchronization speeds in, in case some serious problems appear and uh but commonly like uh, most of the problems are already behind us and like we have a lot of uh, user uh, core nodes running and we have about 250 nodes right now online from which maybe i know 10 uh, hours so launched by or supported by the core team so like we are already a minority in controlling the network yeah so but you don't uh, but of course you don't uh do anything useful without the proper tools for developers so right now after we have completed decentralization in the last three years uh we are playing like a bunch of new instruments so uh, the first thing we call smart tokens uh, smart tokens are a very cool thing because a common user uh, can't read uh, the, the script of a smart contract that is usually known. Uh, you have to be really a programmer to understand what is there or, or rely on the advice on some people that do. And we want to uh, make all the common things that uh, people usually need with a token and make it uh, available for any person without a computer knowledge and without uh, programming skills. So at first that any person can create a token and design it without actually coding anything. And that would be all introduced in the core of the network. So it would be very stable and very reliable as it would be tested over and over and over again. So the funds don't get stuck and everything works properly. And the second thing that as like uh, a person that is using some token, you would be able to uh, read all the terms of the uh, smart token contract and understand how it will function. So you won't have to think um, like, is it uh, what, what this contract would gonna make? Uh, there wouldn't be any holes through which some unusual things can happen that you didn't expect them. Yeah. Uh, to the tokens, we are making uh, an example DEX exchange. With, uh, uh, with a lot of additional instruments I don't want uh, like to declare too much right now that comes to, uh, when, when we uh, step uh, further to that. Of course, like uh, we have included uh, like uh, in our plan for this year, the bridges to uh, different blockchains, the, the bridges to, uh, to other decentralized exchanges, the bridges to DeFi, uh, also, uh, of course, uh, we are looking at NFTs and other things that are very uh, interesting for people right now at the market. So our protocol would also support them, but also could connect with other blockchains 
and that, uh, for example, Ethereum can come to MetaHash network and be a token inside our network, but also MetaHash can come to Ethereum and be a token inside Ethereum, uh, or Bitcoin come to MetaHash and can be uh, um, like MetaBitcoin, something like that. So I think in the coming years, most of blockchains will interconnect with each other and each protocol would find its uh, way like what it want to be. So uh, as for MetaHash, I think MetaHash would be perfect for decentralized exchanges, for storing a large amount of data, for applications that must work in real time and need uh, fast confirmations. And through our uh, own browser that's called MetaGate, you can uh, like see it in a nice user-friendly interface. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about a red hot commodity right now, NFTs, non-fungible tokens. It's a big deal right now. How does MetaHash support NFTs? Uh, we currently don't support NFTs, but they are in our uh, roadmap for this year. So I think we'll soon support them. And we also do have a couple of interesting ideas that could give uh, NFTs uh, like an additional twist. So, for example, I'm thinking about a special feature that some content could be available only for the person uh, that like owns the NFT. So, for uh, without owning the NFT, you can't know what's inside. Got it. Okay. Now, is it true that the MetaHash network will get its own decentralized and zero transaction fee exchange? Um, I guess uh, it is true, but like with a twist, because uh, the, uh, the thing about commissionless, um, the uh, MetaHash network is commissionless until the number of transactions goes through a certain amount the, that the current, uh, current network load, uh, is possible. So when the amount of transactions go beyond this amount, some commission would appear, but uh, it's like, uh, like even if we convert it to fiat money in US dollars, it's like cents for a transaction, so it's nothing huge. But and yes, uh, we, are, we, are, we are building, we are planning to build an example DEX to show everybody how it is done. Uh, it is no our, our intention like to get a very popular DEX, it's uh, our intention to show people how we think a DEX could be built on MetaHash because we know some people already want to build DEXs on MetaHash and we want to give them uh, and open source the base tools, how you can build a DEX on MetaHash or how you can build some interesting financial instruments for decentralized fin uh, finance in MetaHash. So we can see them be creative and already build upon our base code that will open source some additional DEXs uh, on after we launch our own one. Yeah, and I do believe that the blockchain revolution is an open source revolution. And I've learned that MetaHash uh, will have an open source integration with third party decentralized exchanges and decentralized finance projects will be added as well. Is that true? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, so uh, our code is like fully open source. So all the chain is open source. Our MetaGate browser is open source. And of course, the bridges and decks and everything that they'll build this year would be also fully open source. So people can just take it, modify it how they want, launch, connect with us or uh, launch another network and then make a bridge to us. So yes, we'll make uh, a huge variety of different tools needed to connect with other blockchains, needed to download other blockchains and like, for example, put uh, them through MetaHash network and use it at, as Oracle. So we'll put all of that on our GitHub uh, available for everybody who would like to use it. And on top of all that, I've discovered that in the coming months, the MetaHash team will release what's known as voting. Uh, what can you tell me about voting? <coughs> uh, uh, that's so uh, like very important thing about how the network is governed. Yeah. So any any network must uh, like. Uh, uh, goes through process where it changes uh, from time to time its code or adds some functions or changes some functions um, to be like uh, closer to what the market needs right now, what people uh, that are using the network need right now. But 
it is not right when everything is concentrated in one hand. Uh, so what we have thought about that is that we want to, if we want to do any update to the network, or if anybody wants to do any update for the network, uh, he just proposes the update for the code, and uh, all the coin holders can vote if they accept this uh, update or not. If the uh, if the update uh, is accepted, so it gets the network standard software, and like everybody must use it. Uh, this way, we can make the update process faster, but uh, not centralized and secure, and uh, that all updates really serve uh, the needs of our coin holders. Uh, we would even have a voting that would uh, like the, let to change the core team, including the. Uh, coins that uh, are goes into the like development marketing funds of the project, so that would be transferred to another team that would, for example, propose a better way than we do for the next year. And um, I truly uh, would love to see that somebody uh, somebody will come up with a plan and say, "Hey, we have a plan uh, better than the core team now has that initially started the project. We will do this and that." Uh, like. I would be absolutely happy to lose once to a team that would take over uh, the project development for like the next year and do it better than, than us. And then maybe uh, we as the core team that founded the project come next year with a better plan. So uh, we want uh, the network in the future. Uh, don't rely on us even on updates and even on solving uh, like different uh, serious tasks on network distribution, advertising, uh, whatever the network needs. So we'll have a voting for that, that all coin, coin holders can uh, take part in, and all can ho coin holders will be able to make proposals on voting that they want to do. This is a great time to get involved. Where can people get more information about MetaHash? Well, uh, like uh, almost all the basic information is on our website, metahash.org. But uh, that's, of course, not enough as like the project continues. Uh, and most recent news uh, is usually concentrated in our Telegram channels, where we already have like a uh, very active community. Uh, uh, they don't only like discuss common things about like MetaHash and MetaHash prices, but we also have another operators chat. We have a marketing chat with, where people discuss different initi initiatives to uh, like make MetaHash more popular. Like we have a technical uh, chat where people discuss some things uh, concerning like uh, development on MetaHash, et cetera, et cetera. So it would be best way after like uh, you read the white paper and yellow paper to dive in into Telegram channels and find people that are interested in some spheres that you're interested in. I want people to join the Telegram channel and I want them to check out metahash.org, learn all about MetaHash. And if you like what you've heard, just like I like what I've heard, I want you to get involved. So click on the link in the description below this video, go right to metahash.org, learn about this revolutionary concept that's being put into use. The decentralization revolution is here and we're on the forefront of it with MetaHash. Mr. Gleb Nikitin, co-founder and CEO of MetaHash, thank you so much for coming on and looking at the markets. We'll have to have you back soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Goodbye.